want to pick it up by the base. If you pick it up by this white Jenny part, Newhall, right a fourth out. grade teacher, so wants her students to practice working collaboratively, improve their problem solving skills, and understand that when a balance beam is level, the length of the arm on one side of the fulcrum or pivot point times the weight on that side is equal to the length of the arm on the other side of the fulcrum times the weight on that side. Jenny begins the lesson by giving the students a specific set of directions. Each group gets a balance, and the students begin their work. As you're looking at your balance on the left side, put four tiles above the eight. See on here there are numbers? Find the eight or count down eight pegs. And put four tiles on the eight. Now on the other side, materials managers, put one tile above the two. Now these are the rules for the tiles. You can't move these four, and you have to leave this two right where it is. Now you have to add more tiles to this side to make it balance. So what you have to do for the next five minutes is think about where you would put more tiles and draw it. You see on your worksheet number one, you have a scale. You need to write on there where you would put them to make this balance. You're just going to guess. So you need to take five minutes. Don't try it yet. Just think. Take five minutes to think about where you would put more tiles on this side. Sean, do not put tiles on yet. Just think for five minutes. And complete worksheet number one. Five minutes. I could probably put three on the three. You may have started your diagram like this. I have eight with four tiles above it, and above the two I have one tile. Now you have to add more Can we go ahead and add them? to where you think you need to put them to make it balance. Do it with my hand. Don't put them on yet now. Well, that's hard. Don't put them on yet, though. Do we go ahead and write the sentence for what we do? Yes. Okay. I don't have one now. Oh, yeah, but I'm out can't get there yet. I know it. It looks to me like everybody has made their prediction. Shh, Molly, shh, 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 Molly. Don't tell everybody. All right, please stop. This is the point where I said we were going to stop, and I wanted you to listen to me. Now, in a minute, the leader is going to get you started talking. Each one of you has made a prediction. You each need to have a turn to tell your group what your prediction is and why you think you can place those tiles where you've placed them. Then the group has to decide of the four ideas at your group, which one do you think is going to work the best? The one idea at your group that you think is going to work the best, you need to write it up here for prediction one. Then you need to decide, well, we think that one will work, but just in case it won't, we're going to put which one we think will be second. We'd like to try second. Which one do we want to try third? And which one do we want to try fourth? And the groups may start talking with each other. I need to hear you talking with each other. I know, but I, I was just going to say something. We each read our own sentence that we make. 
A six on five. Yeah. Six on five would work. It goes, it goes me, Molly, Tad, Drexel, okay? Molly, go. Six on five? Okay. Um, you can't put read your sitting. You can. Read your sitting. Uh, Molly, that's four. Molly. So, try, okay? Um, I predict that. You can't copy us, and you have to get your own. You have to get your own because we have to make different ideas. You have to get your own because you know copying. You already copied on I do six on five, you can't copy that. Yeah, that would work. Okay, um, I think we should put one of the ones that would possibly work is um, three on ten because um, four on eight is the same as 32, like 32 on one side. And since we only have two on the other side, we need to make it equal. And so three on 10 would equal 30, so we'd have 32 on both sides. I did a short one. Have you decided? I decided one? this because four times eight is thirty-two, and one times two equals two plus six plus five. Six, six times five equals thirty, and thirty plus two equals thirty-two. We see that Molly and Drexel have both offered correct but different solutions. Here we see Molly's, and here we see Drexel's solution. Six, six times five equals thirty, and thirty plus two equals thirty-two. I think I got, I think I got, there, there are four on the eight and one on the two. I want to put three on the ten so there will be four on each side. And it'll make it easier. Ted, have you given them your idea? Notice here that Susie has offered a correct solution, but the reason she believes it will balance is that there are four tiles on each side of the fulcrum. Five on six. Me three, I guess. Right now, each of you has given a prediction. Yes. Now you have to decide which one's going to be number one. You need to talk it over and figure it out. Five on six. Be Susie, easy. you need to join them, and you need to tell them you need to defend yours. Why is yours? Why should yours be number one? Talk about it. <laughs> okay, um, I'll try one. See, if, if not my color is on each side, it'll make it to an eight, which is even. You could just try it'll level out even. I think Drexel would work too. I think yeah. we should make it second because we might not be able to put five. Uh, put five. I know, but I mean, we should make it second because we might not. It might not stay. Yeah, it may not stay. Do you agree? Yes or no? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Tad, what's your prediction? I oh, never had time to lie. You know, but let's put let's put Drexel's down a second. Drexel. Okay. What is it? Drexel? And the tin first. And then Just put, put 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 Molly's first because hers is the simplest. Okay. Copy. Okay. Let's um, okay, Number one, three on ten. Three on ten. Just put three on ten. And mine is five. Five on five six. On six. And mine. Wait. Oh yeah. And mine is Did two on ten yes. and one on six. What? Oh wait. Yeah, one on six. What? Here we see that Susie has changed her prediction to two tiles on the tenth peg and one on the sixth. This is consistent with her reasoning that the number of tiles must be the same on each side of the fulcrum. Why did you decide three on ten was your number one choice? Because it would make four here and four there, which would be. It, it also, if, if you times that, it's 32, and it would also equal 32 on the oh. side. It'll make it equal. So eight times four is 32, uh -huh. and um, it's two, and to put three on ten, 30, 30 plus two is 32. So that's why you decided that was your first choice? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's, the second choice is five on six. But we didn't, we put that, I think we should put that third because it may not work in my mind. I think we should make it five on six. So it doesn't have enough room, that's why we made it five. Well, let's let let's let um, Susie tell us why she thinks we shouldn't make it second, and then you should you can tell us why it should be second. Why do you think it should? Be second? 
I think it should be third or shouldn't be second because um, mine may work and the five the five because there's already four here and if we put it where where he wanted it to be it, it may not fit because it's oh, so you don't think thing. five tiles will fit on there yeah that's why okay now Molly why do you think it should still be second because I think it's the second best um, Why? that would work. Why? Well, what was yours again, Susie? About three, two on, two on ten, and one on um, six. One on six. See, two on ten would make it twenty. Uh -huh. And make it twenty-seven. Okay, so you're thinking that the total number of tiles, when you add them up and you do the multiplying, they need to be the same on both sides? Is that what you're telling me? And you think that what you have down for the third choice isn't going to be heavy enough? And that's why you want to have yours stay on the second one? It's not mine, it's Drexel's. Okay, well you guys need to decide. Are you going to leave Drexel's second or are you going to leave it to third? You go ahead and decide that. Defend it. I think Drexel's would work better than Let's yours. Let's vote. But it may not fit on it doesn't matter if it fits or not. We can hold it. We can. It, it's, it's what if we hold it? I know, but it's the best solution. Get a piece okay. of paper. Right? Okay. okay. Just keep it like that. Keep it like that. Can we try it now? No, no. No. Until she. Mine is now going to work. Uh-uh. We've decided now. You've decided? We're right. going to keep it like What's it. What's it going to make? We're going to keep it like it was. Gonna what made you like decide to keep it like it is? Because, um, it, because mine, it, I was kind of, I kind of sunk in when she said it make, that when you add it up, it's not going to be even. Okay. And I kind of sunk into that, and it was, I was like, let's just keep it like that. Okay. And that was a good compromise. She gave her point of view, and you could see the rationality to it. Yeah. So, okay, let's go ahead and try that. And I, that that one might she might too. even fire. Okay, which one? Oh, yeah, we're going to try this. Three on ten. One, two, three. One. I'm keeping it still. Three. Whoa. My, my, my. Wait, let it, it calm down. It's. It's calm it's still. That one has more weight. No, wait, 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 wait. Let it settle down. It's perfect. Look. It's, it's wiggles. perfect. It's rocking. It's, per it's all like it's it's perfect. Perfect. That's a little more weight, isn't it? That's a little more weight. I, I, they, they did the I same thing and theirs is perfect. They did the same thing and theirs is perfect. Yeah, yeah that's perfect. Perfect. It's perfect. Okay, five on six. No, no, it works. I'll take this off. Take this off. Wait, take those. Keep. No. Take one yeah, five on six. And put one on six. Wait, no, we have to do. Oh yeah, we have to do his first. This is the second one. So okay. Put, put okay, like it works. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Five. On six. six. One, two. I've got it. Five on six. Five on six. I like the way boys and girls are taking turns with the balance so we don't down. break them. Two. <laughs> yeah, we need to help too. Too. We need to help too. Too. Okay. We need to help too. Okay. You can do mine. Let go, Let go Chad. Wow. What? What? This is not it's right. Stuck. It's stuck. It's stuck. <laughs> and it seems to be heavier. Still. That was definitely not okay. Yeah, and then we took one off to see if it was that, but that's heavier now. Mm -hmm. But that has it should should work, work, though. It should work. I wonder why it isn't. Here we see that the students are speculating on Drexel's original prediction and why the balance isn't quite level, which is actually due to a flaw in the balance. Molly and Drexel are convinced that the prediction is valid. Susie suggests taking off another tile, indicating that she is still uncertain about the principle. In a minute, we're going to go down all the solutions that we got, which ones that worked and which ones didn't. And when we're finished with that, if we think we can come up with another solution, maybe we'll try that back at our seats. For right now, our materials manager should not be t playing with the tiles. The tiles should be down, and your hand should be in your lap. Please leave them on there wherever you have them, Zachary, and don't play with them anymore.
Adam, when you finish with that, you're finished with the tiles. Thank you. Okay. Who can tell me one solution, a <coughs> prediction that did work? Allison? You could have done three on, um, on this side, on number 10, three. three on 10. And it would work because you already have four over there, and if you put three. Okay, wait, I, I just wanted one that worked. You put three on the 10, and you said that one worked? Yes. I need somebody who can come up here and draw that on the board, and then explain to us why it works. Who can come up and and draw that on the scale that I have up here, and then explain to us why it works. Danielle, would you like to do that? Now listen, you may have a different reason, so you're going to need to listen to Danielle. Okay, Danielle, and that made it balanced for you. We had four over on the eight on the left side. On the right side, I put one on the two, and what Danielle did was to add three to the ten. Danielle, can you explain to us why that worked? Because um, there's four tiles on each side, so that would make it even. All right, so you, what we need to have is four tiles on this side and four tiles on that side, and that made it work. Does anybody have another explanation for why that one worked? Becky? Let's, before we get to that one, I want you to hold that one. But I want you to explain why this one worked another way. She said we needed to have four tiles on this side and four tiles on this side. Can somebody explain why that one worked in a different way? Matherin, can you explain that for us? Because um, 8 times 4 tiles equals 32. And on the other side, if, if 10 times 3 equals 30, plus 2 equals 32. Can you so go up and write that on the board for us? Put the numbers underneath where the tiles are, and then write those equations for us. Let's look at what he's telling us when he gets it up on the board. Madam, why don't you just put the numbers under the one where the tiles are? That'll save you some time, honey. Okay. And now, can you write something up there to show us why that works? See what he's done? Yes. Sir. Thank you, Matherin. He has a number sentence on both sides, doesn't he? Over on this side, he came up with eight because he went down eight times four because he has four tiles. And he knew that eight times four equals 32. When I started out with just a two over here, what do you suppose Matherin thought to himself to figure this out? Blair? Um, he needs something to add up to 32. He needs something to add up to 32. And since we already have two, now he needs something that will add up to? Blair? 30. 30. And that's why he came over here and put three on the 10. Now, Blair, no, Becky, a minute ago, you had a different solution. Would you go up and, and do that one for us? Erase that and do the one that you have.
Now, can you write a number sentence underneath to show us how that works? that same principle. She wanted it to equal 32 on both sides. So she knew that we had a 2 here, and she knew another way to make 30 was 5 times 6. Now, I know there was at least one group in here who tried this, and it didn't work exactly, but it should have. And that might be because your balance wasn't exactly even, or maybe the floor is a little uneven. But this one should work as well. All right, boys and girls, I'm going to give you another envelope, and it's going to have another problem. Jenny now you gives do. the students another problem, as you see thing. here. I want you to think about it. They again analyze it. Let's look now at Susie's thinking as she responds to the problem. Yeah. Um, I left your side alone and just put on the two, I put one, on the three, I put one, and then on the four, I put one, and then on the five, I put two. We had three here and one here. Susie, would you come and put what you have on the other side? <laughs> Draw up here what you did get. Can you write a number sentence for that for us, Susie? Okay, then let me help you. What do you have here? Um, one in one's place. So write one. You're going to add it to this. What do you have here? A one. Uh, in two. So you one plus two. Plus, plus three. Plus plus Plus, if you want to write this, you don't have to do a multipli multiplication. You could write 5 plus 5 if you wanted to. Add that up and see what you get. You boys and girls at your seats could be adding this up to see if it comes up to 21. Came up to 22, but it... It looks Here we see that Susie's down. understanding of the principle is still uncertain. Let's take a more specific look.